So welcome everybody. Let me just start by saying before we actually start start that this webinar is being recorded and it will be put on various platforms and websites. So if you don't want to be here with your picture uh, please turn off your video and just know that whenever you know we have interactions with you that will be recorded and if you you know if you are showing yourself and interacting with us you also then agree to be in this final video that we will put on you know various platforms so thank you everybody for being here uh, thank you Mavis thank you like, <laughs> I have prepared myself with a uh, paper so that, because I will probably cry, I have water uh, and then actually, as you know, this is called Cocktails and Courageous Conversations and we were talking about this previously. Of course, this is not an alcoholic encouraging event, but there is wine included in uh, Sweden, just so you know. So, Mavis has, you graciously uh, uh, said yes to have a casual conversation with me, with our friends from all over the world. And oh, so... <laughs> Ricky, when have I ever said no to you anyways? <laughs> you never said no to me. And I'm just like, I mean, all that I get to sit here with you. You are one of my favorite people on this planet uh, for so many reasons. And I'll just say that you are, I, the first time I met you was in a workshop in, in Sydney many years ago. And what you did there was just completely badass and courageous. And since that, you are my, you are the, you know, when you have an avatar or like a superwoman or something that you look up to for badassery and courage, you are that to me. Oh, thank you, Ricky. And you give the best hugs in the world. I miss that. I miss that too. So for, for people uh, who are, let, so I thought we'll just introduce ourselves. Uh, I will just quickly, so I was just saying to Mavis, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if people know who I am. Uh, my name is Ricky. I am a psychologist. I live in Sweden, come from Denmark, work basically on uh, teaching people acceptance and commitment therapy and supervising that. I have the best job in the world. I have my own company, so I get to do what I want. And I get to hang out with brilliant people from all over the world, one of them, which is Mavis. And so I wanted to introduce Mavis and I have to read because there's so much cool stuff to say about her. So I'll just say Mavis is a clinical psychologist, senior research scientist at the University of Washington Center for Science and Social Connection. She is the co-creator of what is called functional analytic psychotherapy a treatment that harnesses the power of the therapeutic relationship to transform clients' lives. She's the co-author of five books in functional analytic psychotherapy, some of which has been translated into Portuguese, Spanish, Japanese, Italian, Korean, and Persian. She is a recipient of Washington State Psychological Association's Distingu Distinguished Psychologist Award <laughs> in recognition of some significant contributions to the field of psychology and is a fellow of the Association for Contextual Behavioral Science. I hope you hear how wonderful and brilliant this is. She's proud to be named by New Harbinger Publications, listen up, as one of 13 badass psychologists who happen to be women. Woohoo! Uh, and she literally kicks ass because she's an advanced practitioner of the martial art Kajukenbo. She loves to climb. And the highest peak she has summited is the Mount Kalapathar 
which is over 18,500 feet, more than 5,600 kilometers in Nepal. We both went to Nepal, maybe. <laughs> yes. As a founder, as a founder and executive, executive director of the nonprofit organization Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project, she trains volunteers to lead chapters in six continents to create a worldwide network of open-hearted change seekers who strive to meet life's challenges through deepening interpersonal connection and rising to live more true to themselves. Whoa. That's uh, a long list of badassery. And one of the things that comes to me when I think about you, maybe is I've said this about you being brave and uh, a badass, but there's something about the interactions that people have with you that I have with you. And so I'm pretty sure that that, will, that is what people will see also in this webinar, the way you interact. I've seen your TED talk and people I've linked to this TED talk on the website, it is a must see. So before we start and before uh, we go into this again, this is being recorded. If you are here on screen, you also will be on various platforms. Make sure to mute yourselves so that we can't hear you like uh, walk the dog or whatever it is you're doing. So make sure to mute yourselves and there will be time to interact with us and ask questions. But for now, we'd ask you to make sure you are muted. All right, Mavis. Nikki, thank you for the introduction. And I feel just humble and I, I always feel kind of embarrassed when people talk about me. So that's why, and I don't like talking about myself either, but I love interacting with people and I love that I get to interact with you and that there are participants who I would also love to hear from. And Priscilla said in chat, two amazing women. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you. So I'm going to share my screen. Just have a very brief PowerPoint prepared so that people can, can see what we're gonna be talking about. The title of our conversation is Cultivating Courage to Face the Unknown. And I thought we would start with a meditation on this very topic. What I asked Ricky is, Ricky, would you be willing to do something I've never done before? And she said, of course, without even knowing what it was. And that's one thing I love about you, Ricky, that you have this willingness and openness, whatever, just like I have it with you. I don't need to know what you're asking of me. I will say yes. So what we're going to do is lead a meditation where we riff off each other. So I'm going to start and we're just going to be paying attention to what each other says. And it's going to be focused on, on this topic. Ricky, you're already looking emotional. Whenever you say nice things, babies, I just, I leak. Nice things. Yes, I like I am I'm so honored to have you here. I'm so happy. I'm sitting I'm seeing all these faces of you know beautiful people. So I get emotional. I'm already emotional. I'm just loving this, loving you. Oh, no, I'm loving this and loving you too. <laughs> so I'm also just looking at chat. Today in Brazil is the day of psychologists. And and so hearing us, this is Priscilla. Um, Precious gift. Thank you, Priscilla. So you're ready to start our meditation with each other and for the group? Absolutely. This is totally improvised. Totally improvised. And we've never done this before. <laughs> never. And I, I just I just want to give a backdrop for this, which is that in times of uncertainty, which is what we're all facing, I think there's this cultural idea that 
we're not supposed to feel anxious or insecure or doubtful or fearful, especially if we are counselors or of any type, professionals who work with people, like we're supposed to have it together. And I, I just want to emphasize that in actuality, feeling true freedom or aliveness, which is what mythologist Joseph Campbell says is what we all long for, that human beings just long to be fully alive. And in order for us to be fully alive, we need to be willing to face and to feel whatever it is that we'd rather not feel, to be able to welcome what feels unknown, what feels fearful, what feels uncertain. So ready to, ready to focus on a meditation? Yes. So settle comfortably in your chairs and focus on your breath. On your inhale and exhale. Just finding a rhythm that allows you to tune into yourself. As you focus on your breath, can you attend with curiosity, with fresh eyes? to what's here in this present moment? Is there something that you're dreading? Because it means you have to face the unknown because you don't have full control over the outcome. Ricky, go ahead. And so as you sit here, reflecting upon what it is that you dread, what it is that you don't want to feel, again, see if you can look at it with curiosity and see if you could be willing to make room for it just as it is in this very moment. Just letting your heart open to whatever is arising inside you. Just being with your experience with kindness, curiosity, and non judgment. And as you sit here with your experience, not non-judgmentally, with kindness, see if you can ask yourself, what do I need right now? What do I need in this very moment? Sometimes people feel resistant to meditations. And if you're feeling resistance, can you say yes 
to that as well. So just let yourself feel the freedom from being with whatever you're feeling, whatever your needs are, just fully accepting this moment, breathing in and out, allowing your experience, accepting your experience. And as you do this, I'd like to invite you to take just a moment to reflect upon what courage means to you. Inside this webinar, Mavis and I will be talking about cultivating courage. And just reflect upon what courage means to you this very moment. What would be courageous for you? What does that mean to you? Staying with whatever your experience is, whether it's reflecting on what courage means to you, what your needs are, what's hard for you to feel. Just recognize that all over the world, right now in the past, in the future, people are feeling what you're feeling in this moment or have felt what you're feeling in this moment. So you're breathing in and out for everyone else so that they can welcome whatever their experience is as well. So take some more deep breaths of kindness and acceptance, telling yourself, I'm here for you. It makes sense why you're feeling whatever it is you're feeling. Staying connected to your heart. Gradually bring your attention back to feeling the support of your chair. Paying attention to your breath. Very slowly as you feel ready, let's bring your attention back to our virtual room. And we would love to hear from you in chat what came up for you in this meditation. And it seemed like we did this all the time with each other, Ricky. It just felt like we connected so well. How did it feel for you? I, I share your experience. And one word that I love that you came back to was the welcoming. Um, and I, you know, I will take this with me from tonight's meditation. I agree that there was a flow and, you know, I just love working with you, Mavis. And I keep learning from you and just, you know, taking the welcoming with me. Welcoming whatever is there. I loved how 
Just round it out the meditation with what are your needs? Yeah. And what does courage mean for you? It, it just made the experience really full for me. My answer to your question of what courage means for me in this moment, it's being here yeah. with you. Being here yeah. with you. Because yeah. I'm innately a shy person and I don't like to be the focus of attention. But I'm willing to step out of my comfort zone. I'm willing to be courageous, to be helpful yeah. to other people. And thank you for inviting me again. So how good are you at noticing what people write in chat? There's a lot of... There's a lot. There's a lot, which makes me happy. So there's, um, let me just see. Uh, courage to let it go. Courage to just be in the moment. Putting myself out there and risking disappointment. Mm. Courage to not interfere and to see what comes. Courage to speak up and have my voice heard as I love and thrive on hearing from others. Courage to put myself out there and be heard. To ask for help. Yvonne says, I'm terrified that I'm not, I'm not a good psychologist but I have courage to continue to work and to learn. And one of the things I need is things like this webinar. Feeling vulnerable, feeling negative emotions I feel ashamed of. Being with the pain of the unknown, of insecurities and step up for some decisions. Able to hold deep fears and still be present, soft, strong, Courage. Courage to me is taking the risk I have been avoiding in terms of offering virtual groups and facing those fears. To stand by myself and my own opinion, listening to others and form my own opinion. It felt good realizing that others are feeling what I am feeling and breathing for those people in a different place. To love family, even though I know they will one day die. Courage to admit what I don't know and ask for help. Courage to live by my values. Courage to be aware of my failures. Fear. Feeling vulnerability, asking for help, go with the flow and welcome resistance. To take a pause and accept, be in acceptance, come back, stop the fight and be in acceptance. The courage to not have control over what happens and what will happen. Courage to accept and observe my limitations and not to, and not to see the limitations as a sign of being broken. Courage to feel doubt and insecurity. So these wow. are... Oh my gosh. And Priscilla says, for me, courage today is to be here. Hmm. Wow. I imagine that's true of all of us. Yes. To be here. And I'm glad that you're recording this because, and will you save the chat? Because I, I would love to also go back and read. Absolutely. I have no idea how to do that, but I will make it. <laughs> Afterwards, I'll, afterwards I'll, 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 uh, I won't stop this webinar. We'll talk afterwards. I'll make sure this is being um, saved. And what strikes me is that we are here now all, from all over the world, courageous together. That is just, I don't know if you can see, I just keep touching my heart because this is heartwarming. It is incredibly heartwarming. And yeah. I feel so inspired by what everyone wrote. So thank you for yes. that. Yes. I'm going to move to 
the next slide, we've been focusing on welcoming unwanted feelings in as part of the meditation. So I'm going to invite everyone to answer these questions, but Ricky and I are going to do this out loud. So we're going to do these questions one at a time. And as Ricky and I are answering them out loud, just jot them, jot them down. If you want to write it in chat, fine. If you want to just write it for yourself, I really encourage that is to do some writing. So Ricky, what's here in this present moment that's hard for you to face? Is there a way that when you talk, I can see a bigger version of you? Because I keep seeing myself and I really want to be able to see you when you talk. So, um, yes, I maybe. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I keep saying don't know. No, there you maybe go. now. Maybe now. Oh, yes. What did you What did you do? I speaker view or something like that. It it was that I spotlighted you earlier to make sure you were spotlighted. And so I changed that. Okay, what feels difficult right now? Uh, I, I'm afraid of coming across as a complete failure as I don't have an entire production team, as I don't have all the technical stuff figured out. And I want to make this a meaningful and connecting experience. And so I, I have this story about myself that keeps coming up and it shows up now that I'm not good enough and that I'm not, you know, um, that, that, you know, I'll screw up something. That's, that's difficult in this moment. Ricky. It's so amazing that you're willing to show up the way that you are and to just say, this is what's happening for me, because it's incredibly difficult to be posting something and to feel like you're not on top of it all. And it just makes me love you more. Thank you for that beautiful response it makes it easier for me to feel like a failure knowing that you're sitting here you and everybody is sitting here with me in kindness and compassion yeah and really resonating with with that fear of not coming across the way that I want to be misinterpreted, not messing up, failing. I think it's, it's a feeling that most of us know really well. And, and so when you're leading something and you're able to voice it, it gives everyone else permission and I think more empowerment. I'm, I'm sitting with the question as well. What's hard for me to face in this moment? I I'm, I'm looking, I'm wondering if there's a way that when I'm talking, I can be the one that's larger on the screen and when you're talking. So it has to do with speaker view. And maybe people are, well, it says the host has spotlighted your video. So what's hard for me when you said in chat that someone wrote um, courage to face that the family members I love or people I love are going to die. I could just feel my heart catch. I, I think that's one of my biggest struggles, Ricky, is 
and which I talked about in my TEDx talk, that the love of my life who's 17 and a half years older than me is going to die. And it's really pronounced in, in these COVID times because I'm, so, I'm just so freaked out that Bob is going to get COVID. And I don't think he's as careful as he needs to be, Mickey, and that's just, that really scares me. Also, COVID's hit our family. Uh, my stepson, Paul's, Paul, who is a, he's an oncology nurse. He, he got diagnosed with COVID a couple weeks ago and he had the usual symptoms of sore throat and cough and he had headaches so bad that he couldn't even stand up or see and lost his sense of taste and smell. And it's just, these are just such frightening times. And it's, it's really hard for me to sit with my fear. Maybe it's as you, as you telling, as you are telling us this, I feel so connected to you. And I know your husband and I love him as well. So it goes straight to my heart because I know the both of you. And I can imagine how hard it must be for you to be in that fear. I also feel that it's enormously courageous to share this with us, to not only talk about courage, because I know if there's somebody who knows courage and knows the science, it's you. You're showing us courage. As are you. So sometimes it's helpful, Ricky, to be with our feelings even more by describing what's happening in our bodies. So I'm, I'm going to invite our participants to do that. If you're writing for yourself to just write what's happening in your body, uh, you can also, you're welcome to do that in chat. Ricky, what, what do you notice happening in your body right now? I have a tension in my chest. Uh, I can feel like there's a, there's a sadness and a fear. I feel very much that I'm, sh there, I feel connected to you and I feel like I'm, I'm sharing the sadness and the fear sits with me lovingly though. I'm, I'm holding my hand on my chest. So I, in this moment, it feels as if I'm carrying your sadness and our sadness and fear lovingly in my chest. What are you noticing in your body, Mavis? I feel Tariness in my eyes. I feel a tightness in my throat. I feel uh, feels like a kind of pain in my heart and a tightness in my solar plexus, my belly. And then I, I just feel this, it's like this energy from my heart to your heart. And, and then I look at everyone who's in this meeting and I see people I know and I see people I don't know. Like I just saw Katya and I, I feel this joy as well. That so, so many of you are here with us today and 
allowing yourself to feel whatever it is that's hard for you to feel. So I would, I would love to hear from some of you in chat as to what your answers are to the question, uh, what's hard for you to face? What feelings would you rather not feel? If there's anything you want to share that's happening in your body. And how do you meet these feelings with tenderness, curiosity, acceptance, and validation? Ricky, how, how are you meeting your feelings, your fear of failure, not being who you want to be in this moment in terms of mastery? How are you meeting your feelings with love and kindness? I think that the word that comes to me is the, one, the word that we were talking about at the very beginning, the welcoming. And there's a, this is a values piece for me. I would be, I would love to show people that you can be uh, afraid of being uh, a total failure and, you know, sit here anyway. You can sit in front of the entire world with all of these uncomfortable feelings and welcome them. So that there's a welcoming piece right now and I feel deeply connected to my values. I'd, um, I want to sit here and I want to connect with you, Mavis, and everybody who's in here. And I am willing to feel insecure and afraid in order to do that. What about you, Mavis? Oh, I'm just sitting with your words and how you're willing to feel insecure and afraid. You're willing to welcome whatever feelings are hard because you want to connect. It's yes. Beautiful. And it makes me forget whatever the question is because I'm just <laughs> so, so let me just let me just read from the chat. I don't want to feel insecure, but I also know that it's impossible. So I try to welcome it. But my solar plexus is very tight. Somebody said, Yvonne says that. Rachel says, feeling unhurt, feeling sidelined, feeling tired. I feel my heart beating, flushing. This space is strong. I just had a moment of self-acceptance being here. Wow. In this moment, it's hard for me to be courageous for myself and then not for my, okay, there's something there I'd, I'm not sure I understand. I'm sorry. Feeling unwelcome or not included. I'm guessing that's a fear of feeling unwelcome and not included, feeling like you're outside, yeah. I know that one. Yes. I know that one too. I know that one too. So the question was, how can we meet our feelings, our unwanted feelings with tenderness and acceptance and kindness? And up for me, for you, the key word was welcoming and I think the way that I manifest welcoming is like a softening of my heart. Yeah. And just being very, very gentle and kind with myself the way that I would with someone I love or with my puppy, with a child. Yes. Turn that warmth towards myself. That's beautiful. I love this piece of taking a perspective and looking at ourselves and attending to ourselves as we would with somebody that we love. Yeah. Grant says, feeling great discomfort in this moment about the experience of fear about death. Feel like wanting to leave. And it's okay to have this and remain and be in this moment. This is what group work does. 
embrace it all and my experience and that of others in love. Thank you, Grant. I feel like I want to hide. I'm over 50 and part of me feels like this is it. What's left for me? I'm so terrified of just saying that. Sean, that is so powerful that you said what's terrifying for you to say. Yes. Priscilla says, it's hard for me to show how tired I am and I would rather not feel afraid. Yvonne is feeling compassion. And Jenny, sometimes it is difficult to recognize my feelings and sensations in my body until they are quite intense or I realize I have gone into defensive mode. Oh, this is so important, Mavis. Don't you recognize it, that it's so hard to attend to your body? Like there's, a, there's something beautiful in intentionally checking in, right? Yes. Charlotte is saying, I feel fear of losing control and sleep and my need. Losing control and sleep and my need. I am validating my feelings and connecting to love for myself and my friend who will be with me. I'm opening up for love for my son who I will give birth to any day now. Oh, wow, Charlotte. Curiosity for who I will meet. Oh, is oh. Penty says, I fear that this sense of connection and general presence in, in this meeting will dissolve and not come back. I fear that this sense is just an illusion that won't last. And I, I, I just want to comment on that and I want to be careful so that it doesn't sound as if I'm trying to fix something. But, but, and I know, Maeve, that you will talk about the ACL Global Project. But if there's can I just say, if there is a place that you can always go to get more of this, it's inside of this project, inside of um, this, uh, you know, global awareness, courage, and love. And, you know, I know you will be talking more about it, maybe, and you are, you know, the creator of it. I just wanted to say, if there is somewhere you can always go, for me, it is within, it's with you, Mavis, and this larger group. <sighs> Feeling that I'm not alone helps me to feel, helps me to feel how anxious I feel. So I'm guessing somebody is saying that she's connecting with her experience because she feels less alone. It's hard for me to accept my defects and my mistakes. Richard, my partner has symptoms. We got tested yesterday. Until we get the results, I can't hold her. I'm sad and I see her sadness too. I want to give her a hug and I can't. My heart is beating out of chest. Oh, Rich, I just, um... I'm really feeling for you and, and with you because I, I just, I care about both of you. Yes. And please let me know. Yeah. What happens. Yeah. So I'm, why don't you take one more and then I'm going to move on. I feel lost and uncertain. I fear feeling connected and then losing this connection. I feel like choking a little when I recognize this. I can give compassion to this fear and know that I'm not alone in this fear. <sighs> wow, that is just... One of the things maybe that strikes me as we're reading this is like our need for connection. And you know how I feel so connected with you and with this group. And just noticing our need for connection. And I'm noticing how powerful the sense of connection is 
despite our not knowing, most of us don't know one another. And there's just this sense of humanity and care that we're all connected to. Yeah. Yeah. You attract the most wonderful people to your webinars. I don't know what to say. That is true. That is true. I have the best tribe in the world. Yes, you do. <laughs> so I just want to cover a few more points that pretty quickly because I, I want to honor our time because you have an hour set aside for this. And Ricky, my second thought, in addition to really welcoming what you don't want to feel, is to ask for radical honesty agreements with those who have your best interests at heart. So I have radical honesty agreements with people that I trust. And that means that they give me feedback that's hard for me to hear. And I give them feedback that's hard for them to hear from this very loving place of helping one another with our blind spots uh, because that's really the best way for us to grow as therapists i i don't know about the rest of you but people will come into my practice and they'll have all kinds of issues and one reason i think they have all these issues is because they haven't gotten honest feedback along the way like people are just afraid to tell them like this is how you impacted me when you did this. They don't say anything. And what the behavior that remains has just been kind of reinforced along the way. What, what are your thoughts about radical honesty agreements, Ricky? I love it. And I feel that one of the most compassionate and loving gestures we can give and do to, for somebody is honest feedback. You know, as you're describing, it comes from a caring, a loving, authentic place. Um, and I think often we fear giving feedback. We're afraid that people will get hurt or reject us. And I, I'm, in my humble opinion, it's a huge act of love and kindness to, to give honest feedback to somebody. And it's not always pleasant to receive honest feedback, but I really grow from people giving me feedback. So one way that I've been growing, Ricky, is I, when people tell me that something I do is hurtful to them, it just, it just um, feels illuminating. Because I, I think I, I go around inadvertently hurting a lot of people's feelings without knowing it. And once I know, I, I'm just more aware. Yeah. I'm going to move on to the next slide, which is building your spiritual practice, carving out time, and it can be carving out time daily to meditate, to connect something larger than yourself. It can be higher, your higher self, universal guidance, the divine, what, what, whatever makes you feel like you're outside of your smaller self and i would love to hear one example of a spiritual practice from you ricky i'm not sure this is on your list mavis but one thing that i do every day is i practice uh gratitude i look for the things in my life and the people in my life that I'm grateful for. And I have, you know, this is a daily practice 
Um, and I'm actually doing it with my entire family. I've taught my boys to do, do this as well. So every night we'll talk about things that we have seen each other do and we are appreciative of like it was like something that the other person did and then we also talk about equality within that person that we admire and we do this every day and it's just a it's, it's difficult to go to bed sad when you've just had that experience that's so, so that's a it is it is so, so when you say, I'm not sure this is on your list, the idea is that practices are really vast. Exactly. And, diverse, and that exactly. you need to find something that works. Exactly. So I would love people to write in chat what, what practices bring you grounding and connection and take you outside of yourself, outside of your smaller self in touch with your larger higher selves uh, please write in chat and i want to share one of my spiritual practices which is trying out different spiritual practices so for a while i was doing this um, shamanism practice where i had an altar and i i did these ancient chats and right now my spiritual practice is playing Native American flute and it's it's basically whatever uplifts me and connects me to a sense of the divine and I'll, I'll just do it for as long as it feels like I want to stay with it and it can be weeks or months but then I move on to something else and I do I do a number of practices I mean, it's just a way that I keep myself like engaged in a and I love your creativity around exploring different practices, maybe, is that is very inspirational. And I really want to encourage people to keep writing in chat. We're not going to be reading everything out loud, but this is such an uplifting way to encourage one another. It's just to see what what are our practices that are helpful so please keep yes writing thank you for all the beautiful comments we will and thank you Vibika, for letting me know how to save this chat look at the sea the breath feel how privileged i am and say thanks love grace and gratitude blessing with movement and words christians dance and circle or in the church Gratitude to the life I can live now, looking for the goodness of all people, take care that my intentions are noble. I've been running very slowly in my local park every day. It gives me time to think. Spending time in nature can connect with everyone else in my community that uses that space. It gives me moments of curiosity and appreciation. Walking outside to take a few minutes to watch a butterfly fly around me. Yoga, meditation, self-compassion, meditations, connection. Go to church, write prayers. Grand is doing reflective writing that holds mirrors to my experience with a place of openness and respect, walking in nature daily. I love it. Just so I love inspiring. it. I, yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't wait to to know, read all of these. <laughs> read all of these. Yeah. So my last point is um, the importance of investing in yourself and to make a distinction between an expense and an investment. So an investment is is doing whatever it takes to make yourself better. Yeah. And I think Ricky, you have. In your company ways for people to invest in themselves with you yes so just go to ricky's website and see what, <laughs> and see what she's offering sign up and just sign up and then a way for you to invest in yourself another way is if you're not part of some of you are part of my awareness courage and love global project and 
if you're not, I would just love for you to be part of it. Because when Ricky was talking about getting a sense of connection, the person who said, I'm afraid I'm going to lose this. I connect and lose connection all the time. It's, it's like I, it's a fact of life that we aren't always going to stay connected, but we can always reconnect. And I, I love what you said about if you're part of this project, there's always a way to connect. So, so Mavis, can I ask you a question about this project? Yes. So if I didn't know better, my insecure mind and all, you know, I've told you now, I've told you self-disclosure about how uncertain I can be. In order for join, to join the ACL, do you need to have written like a book or be a scientist or a superstar or, you know? <laughs> You're really funny. <laughs> so what? I've never even been asked that question. Like, I, what my mind would say, I'm not too smart for this. I am not too, I, well, I'm not trained enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not, there would be the not enough story. And so I just want to, you know, there might be somebody out there who, who d has the same thoughts. So who can join the ACL project? Anyone can participate in meetings. We have an app coming out where if you just want to email me, you can either be a leader or you can be a participant. So you can put in the subject line ACL leader or ACL participant and we, we will get you connected with our app. But uh, Ricky, when I first conceived of this idea, it's really for the general yes. public. It's yeah. for whoever wants to bring more awareness, courage, and love to their own lives and help other people do the same. And all, all that's required is this willingness and this compassion. And we help train people to be leaders. I patterned it after the idea of 12-step programs where like any, anybody can, can join and anybody can become a sponsor and it's this worldwide connection movement. So you can be a leader with just a small private group of people as a way to start, people that you interact with anyways. And uh, you get to come to my monthly meetings, kind of like this one, except you actually go into breakout rooms and, and talk to people. We cover a new theme every month, what we did today. It's actually a theme from earlier in the year. And it's a way that my heart just stays full. So I hope to see most of you again. And please just email me for more information. I, I'm looking at the time and I wish we had more time for questions. What, I can stay a few more minutes, Ricky, but I, I want to respect people's time, so. I'm happy to stay a few more minutes as well. And you know, if people have to leave, they have to leave. Let's stay a few more minutes for questions. Uh, but before you leave, I would love for you just to write in chat what you're taking away from this webinar. The chat will be saved, because I know how to do that now. <laughs> If you want to unmute yourself and ask a question out loud, um, that's, that would be really great. But if you just want to write a question in chat or if you just need to leave, let us know what you got out of being here today. It's one of the hardest things about webinars is that we can't like talk to people easily. But we get all these comments in chat. Yes. Darren. Forever. Yeah. I'm taking some, some love with me. Thank you, Mavis and Ricky. Great kindness and compassion. Thank you. Somebody feels in Carola, Carola, Carola feels empowered and engaged. This was a beautiful experience observing loving kindness and action with so many great takeaways. I'm sorry. I have another meeting, but plan to reach out to you both. 
I feel very emotional, but I don't know why. Same here. Beautiful. Thank you. Feeling emotional is not uncommon inside of these conversations. So if anybody wants to unmute themselves and come in here, I see Jenny. Hi, um, thank you, Ricky and Mavis. My heart feels so full this morning. It's 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. here in Australia, but I just wanted to get up and join you guys live. Um, it's so nice to see you, Ricky. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, just listening to your TED Talk and everything, Mavis, uh, looking on your website, um, your work is absolutely amazing. And I notice I'm, uh, in Australia there isn't a chapter in Perth where I'm moving in a couple of months, so I'm going to email you about starting Jenny, a chapter. That's exciting. And thank you yeah. for staying up or getting up in the middle of the night. That means so much to me. Thank oh, you. Oh, it was well you. worth it. <laughs> I'm excited to be a chapter in Perth. Can't wait to thank hear you. from you. So sweet, Jenny, to get, I'm just going to echo what Mavis said. You got up in the middle of the night and I have the best memories of you. Jenny and I walked in Nepal together and, wow. you know, she, you, Jenny, you, ha, you comforted me in times of great despair. <laughs> and I feel, you know, I'm just so happy to see you again. I really am honored that you are here. Thank you. That's why I got up early. I just thought I need to reconnect with you. Oh, thank you. This and like having lovely. Mavis as well, introducing me to Mavis has been a real privilege. So thank you, both of you. Thank you. Yeah, it's not just getting up early. It's getting up in the middle of the night. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do we have more people who wish to make a comment or... I have a question. And um, someone said, "Are there online ACL groups?" They're all online right now. Yes. All of them. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Um, Ramon. I would, yes, from Brazil. Wow. Um, I would just like to say that it, it was a amazing experience. Um, I am a last year graduate of psychology here in Brazil and lots of fears of not being good enough, not being smart enough, not being a good, uh, good student, not being, uh, not being able to be a good professional. And it's thoughts that are being, uh, that I'm, I'm thinking a lot lately. So it was a moment of, calm down and really listen to them. So I got very emotional. I usually not cry, but in front of people, it's, uh, it's um, I get very, <laughs> very, um, well, I, I forgot the word, sorry. But in here, it was a very good moment for me. Thank you very, very much. Wow. Ramon, how good are you at virtual hugs? So I'm just going to like... Yeah. <laughs> wow. I noticed one still holding on to you. Yes. Hello. Thank you you are in our hearts, Ramon. Thank you. Yes. Who did Hello. You? Hello. Here. Mariana. Mariana. <laughs> I'm from Uruguay, South America. <laughs> um, I didn't, first I didn't want to say anything because this is not easy, but it's such a privilege to be connecting with you, with everybody and with you both that I said, okay, I have to do it. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. Thank you very much for this. It's so touching um, to see all, all these people connecting and, you know, feeling 
the same things. I am sure every everybody is feeling uh, very similar things. So I just wanted to thank you. That's all. I'm I'm very touched for this, and thank you very much for your work. Uh, it's beautiful what you both do. So thank you from very deep of my heart. Thank you. Mariana, I am going to remember this moment when I get scared because I have a sense of what it took for you to speak out mm -hmm. in our group. And, and I really mean this. Uh, next time I get scared, I'm going to think of how you had the courage <laughs> to just speak out in, in a foreign language. Okay. It's like that's, that's so inspiring. Very nice. Thank you so much. It Thank you for your a lot to me. Yeah. It's so it's so inspiring and, and also a great act of love to show yourself touched in front of us and in front of the entire group. Like what a gift, what a precious gift that is. I just want to echo Mavis in the how inspirational that is and how much that must have taken for you to do that. Wow. Thank you. Uruguay. Wow. Can you open a chapter, an ACL chapter in Uruguay? Mariana? Mm, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I will email you, so I will, I will get in touch we we are um here in uruguay um i think we are 15 17 people that are act practitioners so i'm going to talk to 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 my friends to Great. see what we can do here and and uh, i promise i will email you um maybe and let's see what we can do <laughs> thank you so thank you. much I'm, Thank I'm you really so much. Excited to hear from you. <laughs> okay. Do we have more? Carola? Yes. Um, I'm going to say something in Spanish just for Mariana. Uh, gracias por hablar antes uh, because she encouraged me to also join. It's been very touch deeply in my heart what happened right now and like maybe said it's the loneliness for connection and finding a place so uh, I'm, I'm far away also I'm in Argentina and I felt it so thank you thank you for all the work that you do thank you so much wow yeah, I, I just want to echo the sense of connection. Here we are from all over the world and really feel it. And also noticing the cultural differences, like there's all these, you know, languages to like saying something in Spanish that I guess went, was straight for Mariana. Yeah, it's beautiful. Do we have more questions? Is somebody wishing to share? So I'm, I'm going to request that we unmute, that everybody unmute and say goodbye in your native language. Because part of what is hard about Zoom is everybody just kind of clicks off and, and I just mm -hmm. love hearing voices. And would you be willing to Unmute yourselves and, and just say goodbye in your native language. Bye. 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 Bye.